explain what we're going to be talking about. Uh, is there anyone in the room that actually understood what Sarah was talking about there? Brilliant. This is what people are actually experiencing that have a disability when they come onto some of our websites. If they're struggling to understand the content or struggling to understand the information that we're providing, this is essentially what we're witnessing right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk around um, essentially how we can do little changes, little bits here and there, um, to essentially help all of your um, website visitors, or your editors, um, actually achieve uh, an accessible website. Uh, now I know I'm up against the, the lunch break, which is next, so I can only apologise for that, but I've got videos and hopefully a few stats that will hopefully make this go a lot easier for you as well. So a little bit about myself, um, I'm a digital agency owner based in Nottingham, um, so Nottingham UK. We are famous for kind of Robin Hood and Jake Love, the main things that we're there for, obviously Nottingham Forest Football Club. Um, but we're actually going through a transformation process ourselves. We are making sure that any website that we produce will be certified by a third party charity as an accessible website. So I'm here really to talk about the journey that we're taking through uh, as well. A very important fact to think about in Nottingham is we've actually got two universities. So people do have a choice in Nottingham. If one uh, university isn't making the mark, they can easily go to another. Now I understand we're a little bit smaller than uh, some of the states in America. Um, but it's a real factor to think about when we are creating the information. So, we've got a, a wide range of people in the room. <clears throat> First of all, hands up if you are a developer. Designer. Content writer. Brilliant. Everyone in this room, you're all part of this process, so it's fantastic. Um, final hands up, who's kind of an accessibility nut? Brilliant. If there's anything that I say wrong, please correct me straight away. Um, the one thing that I think about accessibility is I think it's flipping great. I really do. Anything that we do, it is fantastic. Anything that we can do to make people visit our websites or enjoy the content that we're creating, any time that we can improve that is better. Now my background is I used to work in local authorities, I worked in local governments, I worked in local councils to try and make their websites more accessible. I then worked on a couple of universities, I then worked on uh, a couple of range of private businesses. So we've been able to pass that knowledge through. And the beauty of what we've been doing is we've worked on many content management systems. Now, we're here on WordCamp, we all love WordPress, uh, but anything I talk about today can go through if you're using any other content management system, Drupal, Terminal 4, anything you can think of. This, all, all the theory and all the ideas around can, can work into there for you as well. So earlier I showed you the slide of Sarah signing, uh, talking through. It's exactly the same for if you're blind. If people are trying to look at your website and something coded correctly, or there are certain areas that are just being forgotten about, this is essentially what they're having read out to, which is absolutely nothing and very useless. So when you're building your website, you have to think about everyone. It's not uh, something that you can just think about at the end. It's a whole process. Uh, use as many people as you can to actually talk through your website with them. Um, has anyone here heard of the film Frozen? Quite a small independent film I hear here. I think it's used quite a bit. Frozen was fantastic on that and many things now. If your children heard the song, I'm sure you'd be hearing it constantly over and over again. One of their trailers was actually very good. There was no talking, there was no speaking, it was just acting, essentially. Um, but this is great, you know, it's really engaging, children are loving things like this. But, if I'm blind, I have no idea what is going on. Nothing's being described to me. So, what can you do? You can start to add audio transcripts. Now, hopefully my sound will work with this, um, so hopefully the next slide will be a bit better. So 
as you can see from there, it's exactly the same, but it's just someone actually narrating what is happening there. Now, you can take that one step further, you can have captions or something else in there, but it's to show you how that video has now brought in more people, actually engaged more people within that video. And by having that as just a trailer, think how many extra people now go and see that movie, because they've actually made it inclusive, and they've allowed more people to enjoy that. Um, now, the next video is, is four minutes long, um, but this video is done by Channel 4, a broadcaster uh, in the, um, sort of the UK. Um, but what they did was, with the Paralympic Games, they went above and beyond in what they did. So, this video is just one example of what they did. So, this is a signed version of their trailer, Yes I Can. They also did uh, an audio descriptive version as well. Um, but I'm going to play this in full because this shows you how accessibility isn't boring. Accessibility doesn't mean you have to have a black and white page. This video is just fantastic. So, hope you enjoy. Need glasses. Now glasses, 
it's, it's, a, it's an artificial physical pen and it's trying to be improved. Um, so that's assistive technology straight away. You've got three of those people that actually have dyslexia, so they will struggle to spell, they'll struggle to actually into uh, content on a page. Um, two of them have a uh, kind of short attention span, uh, it, granted that it's definitely me. Um, and the other person in there is, is elderly. You know, we have to think about the elderly here because we need to make sure that our content, and make sure that the things that we're putting on the screen or transcribing to them can be, understand, can be understood by them as well. So the one in five stats fantastic, because if you think about, again, rough numbers, the population of Boston, you know, we've got 675,000 people here. If your university or your um, kind of college area or your after, after school activity is not accessible, you could potentially be losing out quite a few people. If a disabled person comes on the website and actually thinks, well, what else can I do when I come to, come to university? I can't understand a thing. Maybe I'll go somewhere else. 135,000 people. But then if you think about the population of the US, you know, quite a big number. Because you're not just going to be looking at recruiting people in Boston. You're looking at recruiting people technically worldwide. So if you think about it from a, from a United States point of view, 65 million people would be registered as disabled. That's 65 million people that we could be missing out on, that we could be not engaging with. So when we go through everything, we plan, we design, we, we, we try and develop everything to minute details. We use the latest technology, the latest JavaScript plugin, or anything like that. But we're not thinking about everyone, and we really need to start thinking about everyone. So why don't we? What, what are the big barriers here? And we kind of think that the standard you're looking at four, four of the main barriers. Knowledge is, is always going to be a barrier. Now this is why we're all coming to things like WordCamp. We've got uh, an accessibility workshop next week, and, uh, sorry, tomorrow, and another accessibility talk tomorrow as well. I'll be going to them because I still need to be frank in expanding my accessibility knowledge. Um, this is why we're going to conferences, this is why we're learning certain things. So, knowledge is, is a, a short term barrier that we can always overcome. A tweet, a message, a blog post, uh, linking up with a local charity, which is what we have done, this is going to help that knowledge. Time is a really bad excuse. Time is not a problem. We manage things correctly. Uh, obviously, two talks ago, we were talking about how you manage yourself. If you manage the project correctly, time isn't really going to be a factor. If you start looking at accessibility from the very start, from the initial meeting, it's just going to be part of your workflow. There's nothing extra we have to do there. Who has never had a problem client? That's always going to be uh, an issue in there. Um, and typically with money, money is always going to be an issue for the client. You know, do they have to spend more money to have an accessible website? Uh, the answer is no. If your workflow is still going through, you're not changing anything in there. You're just ensuring that you're engaging with more people. So the client may want that bigger logo on his homepage or something like that, or maybe more content over here. But if you do that in an accessible way, that's not going to be a problem. And when it comes to money, it, it, again, by having an accessible website, it can increase the, uh, the revenue that might be coming into your website. So, back home we've got a budget airline, um, mainly using them because they use the same branding colours as ourselves, uh, but they are very good with their stats. They say that they have 450,000 people who are disabled that use their airline. Now, typically they are an online only website, uh, online only um, uh, provider. So, Roughly, you're looking at about $120 on an average for, for a flight with a local area. If they weren't looking after these people, that's $54 million that they are just missing out on. And again, these are just stats just to, just to help highlight the fact. But if you can put that in front of your client, or put that in front of a group of people, they're just going to try and think, why are we not doing this anyway? Why is this not part of everything that we do? Typically when we use a website, if it's slow or it has that unsecure look, it doesn't look too professional, we'll walk away, we'll go and use another website straight away. So, you have to think, what if a disabled person was using your website and it wasn't inaccessible? They will do the exact same thing. They will go to another website, they will go to another college or another university and actually try and use something that is more accessible and more inclusive. It is a gateway to what you're providing. So if your website's not accessible, 
why would your uh, facilities not be accessible? So again, this is why we've teamed up with the Short Trust. The, the Short Trust are a charity that use real disabled people um, that are testing this on a daily basis. They're not using automated tools. Yes, they will a little bit, but at the end of the day, you can easily fake an accessible website using an automated tool. We've got plenty of examples I can happily show you further down the line today as well. So these people will go in, they'll use the website because this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. So what we did, we recently went to WordCamp in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and we produced two websites. And we brought along Alan, who is second on the right hand of this, uh, this image. Alan actually is a screen reader that uh, was, um, did have full visibility when he was younger, but then due to uh, diabetes, lost it at the age of 20, I believe. So he knows what things do look like, but now he's using a screen reader to actually interpret what that is now. So the next uh, video I'm going to show you is Alan using this on a bad website. The two websites are identical, but what we've done is I've hacked code it inaccessibly, and it's a painful thing to do. Um, so I'll go through this. I might stop and start a little bit, uh, but it's really, really good reading. Okay, we're looking at a web page. Um, there are two identical. This one has been produced um, for. Uh, a example of a bad um, page for a screen reader. Um, the good page will show you all the elements that make it more accessible. However, visually, they look the same. I'm going to refresh the page to simulate using a link to go to this um, site and you'll see or hear what happened. That's bad. And as you can try here, that it's very hard to uh, distinguish jewels and navigating around to find a pause button before navigating to it and therefore <coughs> pausing the video. Um, ideally you should have the person being able to manually activate in the play button. <coughs> when on a page, first call the call for myself is looking for headings which will break the page up. I've only got one heading here which in effect, I mean half the page, and the description just says more videos. Okay, underneath, I'm perhaps finding more videos, but what content will be in the rest of the page? Okay, so play button, play button, new button, button, right, zero for subtitles, zero for each left. So as you can hear, <coughs> underneath the heading, we've got all the videos. Uh, 
There's also graphics, the print of Magnum Title Park, with one with you, Bill the Belfast, one of them, the room P, that's one of them, KDD. Okay, which you can hear is the Hadrome Sale, um, Belfast, which is our conjunctive words. P, that's one of them, KDD. Cheers, I think there's a little bit description, but not really um, saying what perhaps somebody can see. If we jump to that, it does navigate down. Which key do you like? Entries are in the text and the means what cheers do you like? Okay, as you can hear there, the whole string of either cheers or cheers dishes. Uh, with no breaks in between, it's like a sentence. Uh, on the good side, you'll see that this can be broken down into a list, making a gap between each element so that a screen reader can identify each of the items. An example could be whether it is chocolate buttons um, at a supermarket, does that mean? Is chocolate you eat and buttons you wear on your shirt, or is it actually chocolate buttons the whole thing of being in chocolate? Also, we have on the four fields. Okay, we've got here a sign up for the newsletter which again is important for the website. However, we've got radio buttons, but aren't descriptive, apart from saying not checked. Again, the only way to find that out will be to jump to them and find out what actually that radio button means. So, HTML, Plain text. Again, you've got to surmise is that how the email is going to come across or something else. So you want more description. Pretty powerful, in all honesty. Now, you may have thought then there's too much talking going on, there's so much going off on there. But that's a real person using a real website that's inaccessible. They have to use a screen reader. So the more that we can do to make that process a lot easier, the better. An auto playing video, everyone wants one of these. It engages people straight away. As soon as they can see our video, they'll sign up for this, that, and the other. Uh, I didn't hear a thing that was going on there. There was far too much going off. And little things by him allowing to pause the video, that brings in more links, so YouTube loves to have the um, related videos. Each related video is then an image, a uh, link, and a bit of text. So that has now almost increased the number of links, the number of images in your page. That is not really part of your content, and again, makes things a lot easier. Sorry, a lot harder. So, with that in mind, how, how can we improve? We need to start looking at little ways to do that. You may have picked up a few things in there, so form fields are pretty poor. Uh, no auto playing videos, make sure you're heading the right. And they're, they're always good starts to fix. But you don't want to be fixing these towards the end. You want this to be part of the process. So when should you start thinking about accessibility? You should start thinking about accessibility at the very start of your project. You tell your client it is going to be accessible. It doesn't matter how you're going to make it accessible. It's up to us as developers, designers and content writers to make it accessible. It's just part of our workflow. So it can be a selling point, but also at the same time that you know you are making an accessible website. You're thinking about it from the very start. You can look at your wireframes. You can instantly find problems with a website by looking at a wireframe. Carousels, you know, how many carousels have we used on web pages before? So when a carousel works, what's the screen reader reading out? Is it reading the current screen that's being slid across? Is it reading them all out? Is someone with maybe a bit of a cognitive difficulty? Is, is the uh, slide going too quickly so they can't understand it? Is the text too small? Is things flying all over the place trying, trying to bring people's attention to it? All of these things you can think about straight away is going to be in this wireframe. Videos, you can know straight away, right, they don't have to auto-start. How do we label them on? 
a really good way to start is looking at the, the Audi project slash checklist. It's just a really quick chat, checklist of things to look at to really start at the very from start of the project. Um, this is being updated constantly and it's doing little things like uh, really talking about the areas, talking about how we should be doing certain form things. But again, it's really good to look at this at the start. Um, there are a few links coming up soon, so we will be putting them out there um, on Twitter and things like that as well. For you. So once we've moved on from our wireframes, we then start to look at things like the design. We have to start putting meat on the bones, essentially. Um, and this is when your designers will start to come. So your whole project team will be part of this, because it's not individual silos, which we all like to work in. Uh, everyone is part of every phase of this project. So when we bring in the designers, there is a lot for them to consider. Is anyone colorblind in the audience? Can you see a number in the screen? <laughs> see, and it's, it's making sure that we can uh, try and negate this problem. Now, if, if, we, if not everyone can see the number 74 in there, how can we portray that information to someone that is colorblind? Um, you may have realized I quite like stats. I love cheese jokes, hence why we have the, the cheesy website. Um, but this is my favorite stats of all times. That's a lot of uh, X combinations. A lot. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that very long number. But if only 1% of those combinations are accessible. That's 141 million combinations that are accessible. And there is no designer here that can tell me you can't make an accessible website when you've got that many color combinations you can work. So it's, it's it's bringing designers in very early on. Now, I understand when you work with maybe an existing project, an existing style guide, you may have some problems. It's always trying to find ways around that as well. Um, the HEX colour scheme, so our company is black and orange. One of the most inaccessible colour combinations I found out while we're going through this process. Which is always a fun task. So we did a test. So our typical orange and black was failing. Uh, WCAG guidelines, essentially section uh, 508, that's going to be failing as well. If we do all of this, it's just not going to work. But if we keep an eye on the foreground colour and see how that slider moves, minimal. It's moved to a very slightly brighter orange, but it's now passing the vast majority of our tests. So our websites are now including people that maybe have issues with colour contrast. And that was a very small change. That's hardly anything. But that ratio is a lot better now for us. Um, so the checker I've just used is uh, webiam.org resources uh, contrast checker. Really, really good little tool to have a look at. There's loads of tools that you can just pick colours. Uh, Max got loads. So uh, yeah, really utilise some of these colour checkers as well. Uh, we use Trello in pretty much all of our projects. It really helps different, uh, different um, organisations work with us, uh, and also for internally. But they've actually got a, um, a colour contrast setting, so if you um, use the um, colour blind issues, it gives you patterns, it gives you other areas to actually distinguish between colours, which is a really handy little tool, uh, and that is using on Trello right now. And then it comes to my people. So I'm a developer at heart, uh, I've been developing for a very long time. So, bringing this all together, getting the designs, getting everything like that, free. Now we have to actually make the code and actually make this work. I don't want to go into the debate now of icon fonts or SVGs. There's loads of uh, little debates out there, that's for another time. Um, but for this example, we're just going to use the icon font. So, designers, uh, you all my people would love just icons on there. And it will make sure that um, the people can go to their social feeds. The problem is, there is no text in there whatsoever, so a screen reader will just read out nothing. They won't be able to go to their social page. And if you have a link going to a website, then it's just going to be a blank link. So, not going to go anywhere on that point. So, by putting in some hidden text, so this is just a class that is essentially making absolutes off the screen. So a screen reader, Google, anything like that is going to pick this up. But your design is not going to change in any shape or form. It's going to stay exactly the same for you as well. So by doing little things like this, it's making better. Technically, you've got more content on the screen as well. Now, Google isn't a person. Google is an algorithm. Google is an algorithm that's picking up content. 
I'm not an SEO expert, but pretty much that, that's what Google does. The more text and the more content that's relevant to your page is going to be picked up. So by default, an accessible website is a more SEO friendly website. There are other little tools that you can use within the development kind of landscape, and that's kind of ARIA. ARIA provides extra content to essentially your code. A good example is ARIA Ignore, which means the screen would completely ignore that. Another brilliant use is ARIA Live. So anytime that you maybe put an item in a basket, you'll see maybe a notification in the top right um, that you've got something popped in the basket into this amount. Uh, blind users won't see that. So by using something like ARIA Live, it will read out to them what has just happened. You've also got things like ARIA Required, so all of your form fields would know straight away what is required and what isn't. There are thousands of things to go in there as well. So again, a uh, really good resource to have a look at certain things in there. Uh, and then content. Guys, I've not forgotten about you. It's still an extremely important part of the website. There's no content and you're not engaged with anyone. So it's now your turn to try and engage with those people as well. Making sure your heading structure is perfect. You know, making sure that you are going one, two, three, you're going down the cursor and you're jumping back up is perfect. You saw Alan then struggling because there was no headings on that page. Break the tab, make him allow to use that website a lot easier, it will read out a lot better for you. That is just gibberish to me. Uh, not only because I'm using Laura Epson, but pretty much it's central, it's got start points all over the place, really close together. I would turn off this page straight away. So, what can we do? Short paragraphs, bullet points, you'll engage a lot more people this way. People will still understand the content that you're delivering, they'll still understand what we're trying to do, but we've just made it easy for everyone to use. One of the things that I had to switch off, because I'm running out of time, I'm sorry, um, is essentially meaningful links. Click here is rubbish. Google click here and you'll get Adobe Acrobat Reader pop up, because that's what most people use. When a link is read out to them, it won't be read out in the actual full name of where they're going. It's actually going to read out the text that it's encapsulating in there. So, visit more about, or read more about such and such. Not just read more, not just click here, because there'll be thousands of click here. There'll be multiple read mores. You can use that bit of tech, bit of content that I used earlier, that SR only. So, your button can actually say to a, a visual person, read more, but there's some text behind the scenes that just says, read more about this page. It's adding more context to the screen reading question and, and bringing more information. Uh, now my next video, I, I can't play, but is Alan actually using a, uh, an accessible website which is actually identical to this? I'll be around all day if you want to have a quick look. I'll put on Twitter so you can have a look at it as well. Uh, I'm just sorry I can't play it for you. Um, so once we've done everything, we've got the websites up there, now what we need to do is we need to actually just start checking. Now, check it using real people, check it using uh, online accessibility checkers, fantastic. But please note, accessibility checkers will pass, they'll give you false positives. But they are a very good tool to find out what's going wrong. So, Wave is brilliant, uh, it's a really good tool to actually allow you to just quickly check the page, it's very visual. Uh, there's Axe plugin as well, there's loads of things that you can use. Uh, and it's all free, you know, if it's free, use it. You know, you're, you're making your website better for that. Uh, we're working with Site Improve over in, the, uh, in England, uh, they've actually got a Chrome extension. Again, it's brilliant because what this does is actually links you to the problem and then links you to the WCAG guidelines to tell you why it is a problem. So again, a very good tool to just have in there in Chrome. Thank you very much. Any questions?